Hey kids, it's JJ again. Um, happy whatever day it is. Tuesday. It's a special day. I'm drinking port, one of my favorite wines. But anyway, um, I got a review for you today. Pretty excited about this. Bam! DYS F4 Pro. I actually ordered two of these. Now, that don't sound so good. Um, I'm not even sure what I did with the other one. I actually got two of these. One of them kind of got goofed up, and I'm not really sure why. I went and uh, installed it. It Basically, this is how it works. I plugged it into the USB port of the computer when I first got it. It worked fine. I flashed it. I installed it in the quad, and it was dead as a doornail. First, it had the red light, and then it was dead. Um... All the soldering connections were absolutely perfect. Nothing was crossed, nothing smoked. So I think it just had a bad trace from the factory that you know once they started applying heat, it smoked out. Not the end of the world. It happens, it really does. I've seen it happen in $10,000 boards. I've seen it happen in $20 boards. So either way. Um, so unfortunately, the only one I have to show you is actually in my quad now because what I wanted to do was show you the actual board and show you the installed board, but yeah, that's okay. I got the next best thing. <clears throat> I got the printout. Bam. Okay. Um, so this is the DYS F4 Pro. This is a great, well, that's misleading, great, great, great processor. I think it's cool. It comes with, check this out. This is why I think it, it kind of sets it above the rest. Comes with a beeper, which is kind of nice. Uh, does it say remove before washing? Yes, it does. Remove after washing. <laughs> um, comes with an XT60 already pre-soldered. And uh, I did put that on the quad. And it actually comes with rubber ice amount grommets, which is actually really cool. And standoffs, which you don't use. But um, the grommets were great because it actually came with seven of them. Now, if we all remember, boards have four posts. So... They give you, here's the other one, uh, they give you extras, which is kind of neat. Um, it is just an F4 processor, it's not an F7, so they're just kind of jumping on that whole ice amount bandwagon that everybody's going to now. Um, and even I bought, hang on, um, I bought these. I have some O-rings for ice mounting or vibration mounting uh, my FCs, which I almost never do, except in drones. Um, Ugh, I think for an F4 processor, you're kind of wasting your time with that. Anyhow, so I did install one of my frogs. It flies like a wet dream. It's very, very nice. I flew one battery out of it. Um, I'm going to go over the schematic or the printout real quick. Um, it's very straightforward. The one thing I do like about this board a lot is the layout. I think the layout for this board is beautiful. Okay, so you got voltage negative, voltage positive pads for every single ESC. This is an all-in-one FC. So you got your power distribution board and your 5 volt back, 3.3 volt back, uh, and oh, uh, built-in Betaflight OSD all built in. So that's really, really great. Um, but I just really like the way they laid it out. Uh, you got two shots, two channels of 5 volts here, two channels of 5 volts here, your LED, your battery output, uh, if you want to bring that to a different, this does have current monitoring, which I do not use. A voltage monitor, current monitor, all that good stuff. Uh, receive, transmit, transmit, S bus, which is what I hook up to. Um, buzzer negative, buzzer positive, blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. There's your boot button. Um, battery in. Voltage, your signal pads are right here. And there's the ground for the signal pads, which I never use. Signal, signal, signal. Very, very straightforward, guys. Um, I think this is a great board. Now, I did technically get a dud. The reason I know I got a dud is because I quadruple checked my um, all my connections, all my solder joints. The board did work when I plugged it into the computer. I soldered everything up nice and pretty and beautiful, and it was just dead to the world when I plugged it in. Um, so it was a weak trace from the factory. I guaranteed it, so I'm not worried about it. Um, but that that happens. It just does. I'm sorry, nothing in this world is foolproof. 
I work in an industry where we, you know, have very, 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 very expensive things. And once in a while you get a dud. We call them FUDs, actually. You know, a, a um, what'd that stand for? A fucked up, what was it? Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. One thing I always do, this is just a little tip for you guys, which I should have uh, talked about earlier. I always give my quadcopters a prostate check, okay? The prostate check is put your meter on continuity after you wire everything up. Continuity is your beep, okay? So put it on continuity, touch your probes together, beep. Then, when I say prostate check, you stick it in the ass of the quad in your XT60 connector. One on one, one on the other. And you should hear one beep, just like that. And that is a capacitance discharge from your ESCs. You sh if you just hear one little beep, now watch this, just for fun. Okay, now let's see if we get a beep. Now that is a capacitance discharge. If I sit that on there long enough, see, it went away. Um, and that's what it's supposed to do. So once you wire this pig up, stick your probes in it, just like I did, put it on continuity, bam, right there, okay? And you should get one beep and that's it. If it goes solid like this, you've got a direct short to ground. I do that on every single build I do, from micros to macros, every, every type of quad I build, I always do a, what I call a prostate check, meaning sticking your thumb up the butt here. Um, and when I put the first processor in, everything was copacetic, everything was fine. Um, I don't know what happened. It, I mean, I know how to solder. I put in 8,000 light controllers. It just pooped out. It's not a big deal. I took it out. I tried doing a reflow on it. It did not work. No big deal. I put in the other one and it works great. The thing just flies like a scalded dog. So uh, we're running 28 amp ESCs, BL Heli S600. Here's the build. This is my frog, one of my frogs, okay? Running Sunny Sky Racing Edition motors. This is a beautiful bird. I love this thing. It flies awesome. Um, and look at that form factor. Now I jacked this thing up quite a bit. It does not nearly need to be this high, uh, but I just, I didn't care. I stuck my receiver. I don't think you can see it. Let's see if we can get some light in there. My receiver is buried under there and the flight controller is right there. There's our USB. And that's about it. Those little pins right there, and I'm sorry, I wish I could show you the bare board, but uh, I actually left it in the house and the other one that's burned up, it doesn't matter. This board will go with the DYS uh, all-in-one ESC. Um, I actually took an all-in-one ESC out of this bird and I put in the bullet uh, ESCs. That's what those pins are for. Uh, but that's it, one board, all-in-one, power distribution board, out to 28 amp ESCs, and the thing just flies beautiful. Um, I'm not going to bother doing a flight test of it because I'm sorry you cannot see the difference of a flight controller on a video. I don't care who you are. <laughs> it flies great. It's awesome. I love it. I love this frame. Absolutely love the frog. I've got two of them. Um, these and the purple 215 I think are my favorite frames that I've got right now. I actually do like this guy. He's kind of a swamp bus, but he's pretty cool too. Um, that's a D215, but uh, absolutely very, very happy with this board. Now, it does come with a very decent manual um, for what it is. There's that same printout I was showing you guys. Um, blah, 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 blah. It shows you 401 ESC. It tells you everything you need to know, but it's not over bs I bought the Kakute F4 all-in-one processor and did a video on that a couple days ago or a week ago. And um, you look at that manual, it's like five pages thick, but Joshua Bardwell also helped write it. So, I mean, he says he wrote the whole thing start to finish, of course, but, um, and that's why it's seven pages long for something you need a paragraph for. Um, despite the fact that he wrote that, I do like the Kakute F4. I like Kakute's uh, back in their F3 days. I think they're a great, great board. Now, my buddy Jim was talking to me today and he said, what should I do? Should I get the DYS? F4, or should I get the Kakute? Um, my opinion on that, and I put the Kakute, forgive the prop damage here, but I put the Kakute in my Gold Cobra Gobi, 
and I love this board. It's great. But remember I said it's got that ribbon cable floating um, gyro on there. Um, so if, this is why I told Jim, if you're really, they're both about 40 bucks. They are both F4s. They both run 8.8. They're both all-in-one power distribution boards. Um, yeah, I can't tell the difference. They both have built-in OSD. I mean, they both got the exact same frills. If you're an intermediate soldering guy, go with the DYS F4. And I'll put a, I got mine off of Banggood, the US warehouse. So it actually came in like three or four days, which is great. Uh, around 40 bucks and so is the Kakute. I'll put a link in the description of both of these. Um, if you're just an intermediate to beginner solderer, I do recommend you go with the DYS. If you're a little bit more advanced, go with the Kakute. The reason being the Kakute has much smaller terminals and it has that ribbon cable um, that you literally, excuse me, you literally have to hold up while you solder underneath it for the camera input. Um, as long as you're careful, it's not, a, it's not a hard thing to do. I think they both fly about the same. Uh, another pro that I like about the DYS versus the Kakute is since the Kakute has that um, foam mounted gyro up here, it kind of limits you. You can't really stack anything above it within reason, um, whereas the DYS is very form factor. I mean, you're seeing my VTX there, but it's a very slim line board. I do like it a lot. Look at it in the description. I wish I could show you mine, but I was a dumbass and left it in the house. Um, but really, they both function exactly the same. Um, just an FYI, when if you get the DYS and you go into Betaflight, you go into CLI, you type version, you hit enter, it will probably come flashed with the target saying Omnibus F4 which, okay, that's fine, but there is an actual target for a DYS F4 Pro. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can flash either one, but I would go ahead and flash the, uh, the DYS F4 Pro target for this if you do it. Uh, they're both great, and this isn't supposed to be a dual review. Uh, I love the Kakute. Um, I will probably buy another one. I might even buy another DYS. They're both really, really good. I think where the DYS comes ahead of the Kakute is it comes with more. It comes with a beautiful lead that's already soldered up wherever I lost it. Well, there it is right there on the quad. It comes with a really nice XT60 lead. Okay. It comes with its own beeper. It comes with ice amount standoffs. And it comes with normal standoffs, which is great. And it comes in a nice little box. And, you know, it's missing. The only thing it's missing is a sticker. Um, I think value for the money, DYS. Functionality, performance in the air, equal. Complexity of soldering, Kakute is harder, but great. DYS is easier. That's my spin on it. Um, let me know if you have any questions at all. Both of these are in the same ESC. 30 amp BL Heli S uh, D Shot 600. Both of them are running. Um, uh, both of them are running um, Beta Flight 3.2. So the newest. Uh, it's not even released yet. The uh, the Beta Flight 3.2. So uh, if you have any questions, at all please let me know. But that's my spin on it. I'll put links in the description. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Keep shine side up. Subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Take care, kids. Bye.